This is a Hustler's Kung Fu production. Sit back, enjoy, and open up your mind. We're about to talk about some deep thoughts about the rich people of Atlanta. You know, looking at the numbers, and this is something I know intimately, I know the numbers. I know how much money most people make, and most people don't make a lot of money. And today I was thinking as I was driving around the neighborhood of these manicured lawns, these massive houses, and I realized that having money is so different than not having money. And I know that's completely obvious. However, one thing that isn't obvious is that once you are a person that's had money long term, you tend to forget about the rest of the world. Like where I live here in Atlanta, this is unlike most of the neighborhoods in America. This is just a fact. Most of the neighborhoods in America don't have several houses with swimming pool, with wait staff and and lawn services, you know, because I was looking at a video on YouTube of this couple who were doing probably eBay. I didn't watch the whole thing, but they got this big old um, package, this pallet, this distribution pallet that you got at an auction. And I was looking at their house and I was like, they're poor. The neighborhood looked poor. There was all these older cars. And that was the first thing that came to my mind with that these they're, they're poor. And then I started to check myself and I was like, that's America. That's most of America. That's how people are. I couldn't hear what you said. That's how people are living. Because they had this house with this little one garage. And the garage was just full of crap and stuff. And I was like, dude. That used to be you when you were in the storage auction business. That used to be you You used to have your garage look like that. You had stuff everywhere you had. Because one of the things is when you're in the resale business, you typically make use of everything. You you have a place for everything. You put stuff, everything. And one of the things about having money that is so awesome is when something breaks. It's an inconvenience versus a travesty or a tragedy. Let's say your name is Sean. Sean, you're married. You and your wife have two cars. She needs her car. You need your car. And then Sean, your car breaks down and the repair bill is $2,500. You don't have $2,500. You don't have it on the credit card. You don't have it saved. So now you're reduced to using one car and, oh, yeah, the car that broke down, you still have to make monthly payments on it. That's horrible. That's terrible. That's stress inducing because every time you walk out of your house, Sean, and you go to the driveway and you see this broken car, it reminds you of where you're not living in life. And this is one of the things, because uh, I had an issue with my BMW, and I took it to two dealerships. One dealership was quoting another price, and actually, the dealer, because I took it to a, a dealer, and there was many of the parts that were on recall. So, the because the, the, at the shop, they quoted me like $9,000. Once again, this is a $100,000 car. And I got out of the dealership for four thousand, but here's the deal: I have two vehicles, so you know I wasn't really I wasn't really that inconvenienced. I just drove the other vehicle while the car was in the shop for like a week. Got the car back; it was fixed. The repair bill was much less than the independent shop because they didn't have the ability to get the recalls, and I was just not really pressed. I paid the bill. It didn't come out of cash flow. I had an account where I stacked money for these type of things. And if you are a person living in these United States of America, living the average way, you don't have a savings account 
for repairs for your vehicle. You don't even have a savings account. There was these polls of most of America could not come up with $2,000 cash within 30 days for an emergency. I walk around with 500 to 1,000 bucks in my wallet at all times, just out of habit, just out of habit. And I, I keep money on my credit cards. I keep money in several checking accounts and I'm in the habit of keeping money. I'm in the habit of making money. And most of America isn't in those habits because when you look at the situation that most of America is in, when something bad happens, it can become a tragedy versus an inconvenience. And that is the situation that most of my neighbors are in. The car breaks down, they usually have two or three. Uh, it's just an inconvenience. And you don't really think about, and your friends are all in the same boat. Everyone that you know, they're pretty much on your same level. They pretty much have the same lifestyle. And it's, I can't say it's a fantasy. I'm not going to say it's a fantasy because it is our reality. But why is our reality so different than the average person's reality. And I'm going to give it, and it boils down to one word, choices. Many of the people who live in this neighborhood struggled in the beginning, but they made a choice to pick an occupation or start a business and to stick with it. And they stuck with it. Uh, one of my friends, he his, he's had his business 15 years, and the first three, his wife had to have a job. His wife had to have a job because they needed their money because he wasn't making that much money. Now, he rolls around in a brand new Porsche. She's got the big Tahoe, you know, and it's very different life, but it's about choices and making a commitment to something. Because I'm going to drop a little knowledge about, you know, well, I, I haven't done this for Disruptive Mail, but I will get on it. Dealing with sugar babies. And typically, one of the things that I have noticed is the sugar babies have low impulse control and no discipline. And this is why they need a sugar daddy. And I've been on the site for a while, and I've noticed that a lot of them don't have sugar daddies because there's only, I mean, seriously, how many men have an extra 1000 to $2,000 to give to a chick? The reality is, in my neighborhood, there are several men who could pull this off. More than likely, there are a few who's got some sugar baby stashed here and there. But the average man, which is most men, can't do that. I'm like, I can't give you $1,000. I can't give you $2,000. I'm trying to pay my bills. I'm trying to pay my car note, my visa, my MasterCard, my rent, my mortgage. And after all that stuff's paid off, there isn't much left over. You could slide in my DMs or you could come over for the night, but I can't have you long term. And I looked at this because, you know, more than half of the population is female. And this is one of the things that happens with a lot of women. Let's say your name is Sandy. And Sandy, you met Ed. Ed looked good to you. You let Ed hit it. And Sandy, you were not prepared because you had unprotected sex and you were not on birth control. And Ed was giving you the D and making you scream and moan and do all these kind of stuff. And next thing you know, you pregnant. And Ed is like, I ain't marrying you. It ain't happening. So now you a single mother. Do you know that one of the greatest statistics for poverty is becoming a single unwed mother? And it becomes more dubious when the inheritance, because this is why there are so many poor people, because you inherit the legacy of your parents. So if your parents are poor, more than likely you're going to grow up to be poor. 
facts, as they say in the, these internet streets. And this is the legacy that you leave for your children. This is the legacy that you put out for your youngins. And so many people get caught up because Ed, Ed was all muscular. He had a nice chest. He had a big dangling. And, you know, it was just like, ooh, Ed, give it me the D. And then, you know, you didn't have forethought. So you had these consequences, which the minute that you got pregnant is the minute that you got very far from living in a neighborhood like this. And this is what I tell my guys, like, look, dude, I mean, you know, go out, ski, do what you need to do, wear a condom, but don't get no chicks pregnant, man, until you're in the position to take care of a child and yourself. And this is what happens to so many people. Uh, so many people have a kid and they have to drop out of school to get a job to support that kid, which is the recipe for low income for life. And this is why so many people, you know, it's like, hey, you know, Sally look good, big booty Betty look good. And they're doing this stuff because one of the things I've, I've noticed about many of my neighbors is they got married young and they're still married. And I know red pill and mig toe dudes are going to be throwing rocks at the screen. I don't really care. But statistically, Married men make more money. And I'm going to tell you why. As someone who was a hoe in the streets, because my situation was different. I was a single dude, but I had a lot of money coming in and I had a lot of free time. So I was able to, because getting women is time consuming. Dating a lot of women, creating rotations in the beginning is really takes a lot of time. And you got two options as a single guy. You could go out and chase money or you could chase women. And if you chase women, you ain't going to get any money. And that's one of the things I see around here. A lot of these dudes, they went ahead, they got them a nice little wife and they worked in their business. They worked in their career. Now they're making six or seven figures. They live in this neighborhood. They have good lives. And when bad things happen, they don't freak out. It's just an inconvenience. If the refrigerator breaks, oh, okay, we'll get another one. If the roof needs to be fixed, we'll fix it. It's such a different lifestyle, which brings me to my next point. People without money have all types of fantasies of how people with money live. I always hear this like, well, you know, I know this guy, he's a multimillionaire, but he drives a pickup truck just like me. <laughs> There's this proximity, this thing to create proximity that because someone has a lot of money, that they really don't live a life that's very different from you. And I'm here to tell you that ain't true. People with money live differently. They take more vacations. They live in bigger houses. They drive better cars. They have better health. They live longer. People with money live differently than folks without money. But you always hear this, like this whole thing with Kawhi Leonard, who's an NBA star, and, you know, he drives his old truck. Well, news, news flash, the truck is souped up and cost 100 k Here's something. Every person with money spends that money somewhere. It may not be cars. Everyone doesn't isn't crazy about cars. It's going to be on their house. It's going to be on their children's education. It's going to be on taking vacations. I my friend who had the business, he and his wife take no less than 12 vacations a year. He drives a Porsche, she drives the big Tahoe. They have a million dollar house and they take 12 vacations a year. That's real different than because, you know, one of the things that I, I, I begin to understand, like when I was younger and I joined the military, my first duty station was Schofield Barracks in Hawaii. And I would see people come to the island and going to Hawaii was like a, a dream vacation, a once in a lifetime type vacation for many people. And once again, my friends, like uh, she, 
His wife went to Ireland and then she went on this mountain climbing trip by herself because they take 12 vacations. Plus, they take, you know, she goes on these uh, excursions because, you know, they got like that. And this notion that people with money are not that different from you because you hear this like, well, you know, the people with money, all their kids on drugs. I live in this neighborhood. These kids are not on drugs. These kids are innocent. These kids are nice because they're pampered. They're sheltered and they're protected. I know, you know, because once again, once you begin to understand the game, once you begin to understand life, it's about choices. And one of the reasons that these people are here living like this is they made a choice many, 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 many years ago, many, many years ago to commit to a profession or starting a business and sticking with it. And when you look at poor people going back to the sugar babies, they're missing certain attributes that d indicate long-term success. Number one is discipline. The one is a lack of low impulse control. Low impulse control will is so dangerous because you'll just do something. Lack of low impulse control. Like one of the reasons, I know this is going to sound really, really crazy and a lot of people ain't going to believe this, but I've done the research that women with goals don't get pregnant. Women with goals be working on their goals. They be working on setting certain things up. They be working on their lives because this is one of the things for my Craigslist protocols. I used to have unprotected sex. No one ever got pregnant. You know, the chick who got pregnant was my ex-girlfriend. We broke up, but we kept having sex and she had a kid to try to trap me. And I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll deal with this child. You know what? Matter of fact, I'm going to be dad. And she'll stay with me during the day. And she'll stay with you during the evenings so you can go to work. They ain't like that plan because she wasn't getting no money. Her mother came down here on her broom talking about you drive a BMW. You supposed to give her some money. And once again, they didn't understand I was a disrupted man. I was going to take care of that baby during the day. But they didn't want that. They wanted a check. They want me to write this heifer a check and shut up and back in the corner and let them do whatever they wanted to do. But once again, it didn't go down like that. Because one of the things is when you have money, you have options. You have a lot of options. And I had options. I went to court and I fought it. She wouldn't file a child support case against me. Uh, she even tried to check my taxes because I logged on to one of these uh, tax sites and my social security number was already in there and I never logged in before. And, you know, because I made choices years ago to start a business, it gave me the options to fight this fool. And this, this is one of the things because, you know, there's every day there's men out there complaining about child support, complaining about their baby's mom. Because they don't have enough money. They don't have enough options. They don't have enough experience. But one of the things that happens in this neighborhood is most of the women are married. And you want to know why? A single woman can't afford these houses. There might be a few here and there, but the reality is they need a man who's making some money to live this lifestyle. This, 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 this is facts, as they say in these internet streets. So you don't have a lot of single women in this neighborhood. They're married. Or if she's single, she's going to be older because her husband died. Uh, Skip Carey, who used to be one of the broadcasters for the Atlanta Braves, his widow lives around the corner. And she's about 80. The only reason she's living in this neighborhood is because she had a husband that was making the seven figures a year. And they probably got the house paid off and living nice and doing what she needs to do. But in closing, if you want to live an abundant lifestyle, you got to make a choice. You got to make some positive choices on what you're going to do. And you got to go through some crap. You're going to have to go through some stuff. 
Because once again, the difference between people with money and the people without money is choices. It ain't that they won the lottery. It ain't that everybody's parents left them millions of dollars. This happens here and there. But the reality is most of these people in this neighborhood are self-made. And this is the reality. And once again, if you want to be rich in America, it is a choice. It's not getting lucky. It's not happenstance. And just for the record, that rich guy around the corner, he don't live like you do, player. He don't live like you do. Let that nonsense go. This is Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. I'll see you in the next video. Be sure to watch a lot of the videos. Go to the front of the channel and watch a bunch of the playlists and get this free 99 knowledge. So with that, I will see you later.